I'm a pretty big horror fan, which is kind of an understatement. I have hundreds of horror films. I've seen hundreds of scary movies. I'm a horror fanatic. It's important to me. I love a good scary movie, and I know a good scary story when I see it. In fact, horror stories, scary stories, have been around for thousands and thousands of years. Some fake and made up, like a good Stephen King or Edgar Allan Poe story, and some of them all too real. Well, there was quite a horror story that happened about 2,000 years ago. It happened to the greatest man to ever live, Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect life, yet at the end of that short life, he suffered the most horrific death you could imagine. I've seen my fair share of horror movies, Saw, The Exorcist, The Shining, slasher movies, Halloween, and despite all of those scary movies, there is not a death that is as intense, scary, gory, and sad as the death Jesus went through. Crucifixion is one thing. Being nailed with nails through your palms of your hand and through your feet up on a cross. But it doesn't just end there. Jesus had to lift his body just to breathe. Imagine doing that for hours on end in the sun. Not only that, but he had a crown of thorns placed on his head. He was spit on, mocked, and whipped. And they say that some of the Roman whips that they used actually had shards of glass and metal in the fabric. So when it whipped, it would dig into your skin and rip it off. That's pretty horrific. And if any movie had such a thing in it, it would be deemed a horror story for sure. Jesus endured that and died because of that excruciating pain and death. But why? Well, the book of Isaiah, which was written long before Jesus was even born, told of a coming savior that would be punished for the sins, for the bad things that people have done. And by his wounds, this savior's wounds, humanity would be healed. What does that mean? Because I'm sure you know about the crucifixion of Jesus. I'm sure you know that Jesus died for your sins. But what does that exactly mean? Well, I'll give you an analogy that has to do with my good old love of scary stuff. Suppose I lended to you my copy of The Shining on 4K Ultra HD, which is the prized gem in my collection. I love this thing. It's important to me, as horror is important to me. Suppose I lended that to you, and then you broke it, completely snapped the disc. I'd be pretty upset. In the same way that that is important to me, holiness is important to God. So, like the metaphor I'm making, you snapping the disc is like us breaking God's morals, his holiness, his goodness. And we've all done it. We've lied, lusted, cheated. We've done things we're not proud of, things against others, ourselves, and most importantly, God. And because of that, we are enemies of God. If you broke my prized possession, you're kind of my enemy, unless I were to forgive you of that. And that's what God did. But in order for me to forgive you of it, would that mean that I have to pay for this or you? Well, if I forgave you of it, I now had to pay the price for my disc here. You would be relieved of all debts 
unless I put the debt back on you, which I wouldn't do because I'm a forgiving guy, and I'll forgive you for breaking my disc and I'll go out there and pay for it. In the same way, God had to pay for our sins. And in order to do that, he had to experience death. How can God die? Well, he can't exactly die unless he came in the form of a man. 100% God and 100% man. An impossibility by our... Bleh. <laughs> An impossibility by our standards, but with God, everything is possible, even the things that we can't quite comprehend. This God-man named Jesus, which means God is with us, Emmanuel, came to earth and lived a perfect life. Unlike that metaphor, he never broke the disc. He never broke God's holiness. He was holy his whole life. Yet, he had to pay the penalty for our sins. Like I had to pay for that disc, Jesus had to pay for each and every one of us in order for us to be forgiven. He died and suffered immensely for you and me. And you might be thinking, well, if he's part God and part man, didn't he have the power to just break off of that cross? Yeah, he did. In fact, the human side of me would say if I had those powers, I would have yanked off that cross and just killed everybody there for what they did. But Jesus isn't like that. You see, Jesus wasn't stuck to that cross because of nails in his hands, but because of his love for me and for you. It's pretty powerful. He hung there and died, breathed his last breath, was put into a tomb. And like a lot of horror movies, death had won. At least for a few days. Because three days later, Jesus came back from the dead. An impossibility by human standards, sure. But with God, everything is possible. And unlike a good zombie horror film where people are resurrected looking decomposed and evil, Jesus came back perfect. He could sit and eat and talk with his disciples and then he ascended into heaven and is now seated at the right hand of God. Pretty cool stuff. Even more cool than, say, a good horror film. Even The Shining will have to sit second rate to that story. Jesus died for you, for me, to pay the penalties of our sins. And Jesus said whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Because like Jesus, one day, I'm going to die. And you are going to die too, unfortunately. We can be afraid of it, we can fear it, like in a good horror movie, or we can look at it and understand where our beliefs are and put our faith, put our belief and understanding in Jesus. I want you to think about that today, because today, if you didn't know, is Easter Sunday. And I want you to remember that message, because Jesus loves you. That's a cliche thing to say, but I stand by it. And you know what? I hope you have a great Sunday. Think about that message, and let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite scary movie? Because I have a lot of favorites, too. God bless you.